love my life here, you know. I I love it here. I have no regrets. I was born in the Philippines on October 26, 1951, uh, on Leyte, Philippines. And uh, my mother uh, was a housekeeper, and my father, he was a, a butcher. He, sell, he, sells, he sold meat, you know, like pork. So I went to school there in, in the town of Tolosa. Then I became a teacher, a high school teacher. I, I taught at uh, Mandaluyong High School before I came to, to U.S. No, from Mandaluyong High School, I went to Nigeria. I was also hired as a teacher, a high school teacher. And then from Nigeria, I came to U.S. And then in U.S., I worked as a, as a nurse, you know, caregiver. My first patient was a half-paralyzed lady. That time on, until now, I work as a caregiver. Describe what your siblings were like. I can say the girls are girls, they are, you know, they are hardworking. The boys or the men, you know, they don't do anything. It's the girls, they work harder than the boys. So like the studies, the girls are more, uh, they, they study harder than the boys. The boys were pampered by my father, you know, they were pampered. And because according to my father, they, they, they carry the family name, you know, so that's why he preferred the boys to the girls. So because he pampered them too much, they married early and they couldn't get jobs early. And even if you're in high school graduate, there are no jobs. It's really difficult there. Unless you have, you know, of politicians that could help you. Uh, because I have a different life from my, you know, from my childhood. So I'm okay with this, I'm happy. Because what I have now, I didn't have it when I was young. So that's when a person, what they call this, appreciates. So yung, during those times, did you ever had any conflict with them? What what was it over? Oh, I never had any conflict with my parents. You know, when I was a teenager, they didn't have problems with me because I was a good student. So nothing. And besides, uh, I think they were. I was the one that helped them. You know. Since I came to America, I helped them had a better life because I sent money to them. And then I helped my other sister to go to Canada. And now, it's like they work for U.S. government. My mom gets money from me, from my sister. So, they have a better life, thank God. Was that any part of the plan or it just came out? or? Well, you know, in the Philippines, it's like... It's like almost everybody, let's say 90% wants to get out of the country. Mm -hmm. Because, I don't know, they have this belief that uh, money is easier to, you know, if you're working abroad because like dollars, it's right now, it's like times, you know, one peso is times like 45, you know, mm -hmm. 46. So, they like to work abroad, you know. Even... As long as it is outside of the country, you know. Mm -hmm. So you can see that, like, agencies that hire for to work for people abroad, it's always full. But in my time, it was not a, a private agency. It was government to government, you know. So, and during that time when I applied, the office of the Nigerian government, the embassy, the Nigerian embassy, we, we, we couldn't sit anymore because it's like, I know you know, too many people, you know, too many, too much applicants, you know. Mm -hmm. And the applicants were like from the tip of the Philippines, you know, from Apari to, to Hulu, you know. <laughs> so a lot, a lot, a lot. 
So, yung pag pag abroad po is like taking a risk. Ibig sabihin, um, either hindi nyo po pinagkakatiwalaan yung Philippines kasi parang nakita nyo po dati na parang walang hindi siya open light, hindi siya magka-advance. Uh, How does that compare to taking a risk to another country na you don't, know, you don't know anyone, you don't know the culture fully, you don't know, you don't expect you don't expect yeah. not okay, anything. Okay, this is what I could say. If I have to do it all over again, I'm going to do it all over again. Yeah. I'll take the risk no matter what it is. Yeah. Because if I have stayed in the Philippines, my life is not going to be like this. I may not be rich here, but I have a comfortable life. Not comfortable as like, but it's much better than in the Philippines. So yung pagmunta niyo po dito, oh, who were your friends? Who, who, well, when who I helped came, you? I, when I came, I didn't know anybody. Yeah. I didn't know anybody when I came to U.S. So when I, uh, like, I was in Nigeria, huh? so we had a friend whose mother was a friend whose mother had, uh, what do you call this? rest home, you know, at a home for the, for the elderly. Mm -hmm. And then, so, I said, I, I want to go to U.S., but I don't have, a, I don't know anybody, where can I stay, can you help me? And then she said, okay, you can stay with my mom, she has, uh, maybe you can work there, she has this home for the, you know, for the, for the, for the elderly. Mm -hmm. And then I said, okay, I go, and then, but how, in the airport, how, how do I know, or how will she know me? So I described this is my this is my dress, my color, my blah 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 things like that, and that is how, you know, I was met by them at the airport. That was it. So, and then uh, my life was not. Let's just say that I was not. I don't know if I say I was not happy, you know. So, when there was a time that they went out to, I, three days only, huh? I was there on the third day, but I, you know, it's, I don't know if I could say this, but even when I eat, they would look at me, <laughs> then they would turn the lights off, you know, things like that. So, and then I saw this Filipino newspaper, and then I said, paralyzed lady, semi-paralyzed lady in need of a Filipino, Filipino caregiver. I said, oh, maybe this is the one they're talking about, somebody to take care of the old lady. So I called her and then uh, said, can you come for interview? I said, yes, okay. So I went for the interview and then, okay, we still need you on blah, blah, blah. I said, oh, no, I have to go somewhere to pretend so that, to make, so that they could hire me. You know earlier so and then so that's how I was hired but I, I didn't know I just came I didn't know how to travel you know because it was in another place I have I don't know how many hours you know I have to commute I said how do I know you and how do I go there oh you I will meet you at the station the bus station blah 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 so the son met me at the bus station and then Oh, we, we need you on blah, blah. I said, no, because I have to go somewhere. I am in a hurry if you don't hire me, and then I'll just leave. So they hired me, and then that is how I got the job. And I was with them for about nine months. So it was a live-in job, and the lady was, uh, she was from, she was a Hawaiian lady. And her, and her ancestors were Filipinos too, because she said that her, her father was a Filipino, so that's why her family name was Cruz, yeah. So I stayed with her for nine months and then the rest is history. During your stay with the uh, Hawaiian? Uh, Hawaiian lady, yeah. Hawaiian lady, uh, how, was, how was your first day, your first week? Oh, she was... How was adjusting, you know, towards the life? I was, uh, there was not much adjusting, even if I didn't know nursing. Because 
It's just like common sense. <laughs> you, you lived in with the Hawaiian Yeah, I, I live, it was a living job. I lived with them. I had my own room. Do you, was, guys, do you guys share the same food? Oh yeah, same yeah. food, yeah. And then, uh, or uh, she would give me the food for myself, you know. I would have to cook it for my own. So, okay, she would give me chicken and then she would let me cook for my own. She, she cooks and if, if I want it, she would let me eat. But it, most of the time I didn't like her cooking, so <laughs> I cook my own food. Yeah. So there, there wasn't much adjusting? It just... No, no. The, and, uh, I, in fact, I was, uh, what do you call this? I could feel that they have a respect, you know? Because I was given my own room. They treated me really with, like how the Americans treat, you know? You have your own room, they treat you nicely, with respect. Not like the Philippines when you're a maid. You know how it is, the maids there are treated. Mm -hmm. Here, you're not treated like a maid. You're treated with dignity, you know, somebody that is like, you know, equal to them, yeah, something like that. So wh why did you think they asked for a Filipino caregiver instead of Oh, butter? because Filipinos are good nurses. Even now, huh? most of these families, they request from the registry for Filipino nurses, Filipino caregivers. Do you think it has something to do with uh, culturally or maybe they're just comfortable because um, Filipinos doesn't speak that much English or? No, 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 no. There, in fact, there is no language barrier, you know, compared with the other nationalities. We can speak English, yeah. So I think that is another reason why they hire Filipinos. They prefer Filipinos. And besides, they see it also from, other, from their friends that their nurses are Filipinos and they, they could they, they talk among themselves how nice their nurse is. So I said, oh, I might as well get a Filipino nurse too. So having or having a good value, having good, having good morals, being a good worker, being a good Filipino, what if you encounter something racist, something negative within your, within your way or like, you know, Workplace, or basically just outside the street while while shopping or anything like that. How do you how do you respond as a Filipino? How do one time in downtown? I was I just asked him, you know, how much is this? And then the guy said, but it was like high end fashion store. And then I said, oh, so he told me the price, and I said, oh, I can't afford that. Are you Vietnamese? <laughs> the guy said, are you Vietnamese? And then I just left. I didn't pay attention. Yeah. So <laughs> that was it. So, but so far, I haven't encountered like, uh, like, uh, racism, you know. Although they say, "Are you Filipino?" I say, "I'm a Filipino," but it's you know, they're, they're just asking me. Or sometimes when I'm walking, where are you? Uh, which country are you from? I tell them I'm a Filipino. Yeah. So nothing so far, nothing negative. Have you ever uh, have you ever told people that you're Filipino American or are you Asian American? No, because none in my looks. <laughs> I'm pure, pure Filipino. Sometimes they even think that I'm a Korean, yeah, because of my skin. And then so, or Chinese, they won't talk to me in the bus because they think I'm not a Filipino. Like Filipinos, they don't talk to me because they think I'm not a Filipino. So they think that I'm Chinese or, or Korean. And then the moment I talk, say, oh, you're a Filipino, things like that. For me, I don't have many friends. I have only my family, and if I have Filipino friends, they're really, you know, those I know, close, close friends that I know them. Yeah. And you don't mind having. I don't. I'm happy with my life, yeah. I'm happy with my life. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>